the most powerful Pokemon. Now, what does that even mean? I don't really know, but I found a list that says they created the top 20 most powerful Pokemon ever, and we're gonna check it out. This is Ashley with Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most powerful Pokemon. For this list, we're gonna be looking at all the Pokemon who are the most powerful within the Pokemon lore. Who do you think is the most powerful Pokemon? Let us know in those comments. Just want to say they, they cut it straight out just like these are all the pokemon the pokemon lore thinking that i don't know are we gonna think there's gonna be like a digimon on the list like <laughs> number 20 reggie gigas oh solid at first glance you may shrug off this normal type pokemon due to its funky design but the fact that it's the creator of the legendary titans, who are powerful Pokemon in their own right, proves just how big of a deal Regigigas is. Not only is it the creator of these Pokemon, but it can also control them against their will, even if they have been captured by a Pokemon trainer. That's offensive, they didn't show the other two Regis, they deserve some love too. Regidraco, Regi- oh man. R Reggie Lecky. <laughs> I have such a hard time with that name. Dude, they're just like hyper beaming, like one hand. <laughs> it can survive oh, insane man. temperatures, both hot and cold. And according to Sinnoh legend, this colossal Pokemon had enough strength to move entire continents. Very true, with a rope. Number 19, Darkrai. Darkrai, the pitch black Pokemon. Darkrai okay. can cause people and Pokemon. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on. I'm not sure if these are in like particular like, order, but Darkrai is not more powerful than Reggie Gigas. <laughs> yeah. Come on, you have nightmares. Darkrai sounds kind of scary. It'd be in your best interest not to fall asleep around this Pokemon. One of the two masters of dreams, Darkrai has dominion over nightmares and darkness, as if its name didn't give it away. Causing endless night terrors to any dream it enters, he's practically the boogeyman of the Pokemon world. Number 18, Hoopa. Hoopa okay. will tell our story now. Don't be angry. Don't let its diminutive size fool you. Okay, I'm like 90% sure these are not in like a specific order, so it's fine. Darkrai might be one of the 20 most powerful, maybe. I this psychic ghost legendary has incredible power, even in its confined state. Using its rings, it is able to manipulate and distort space, transporting people and Pokemon alike across the world, and even dimensions. Doubtlessly, its true power isn't unveiled until it achieves its unbound form. When exposed to the prison bottle item, transforming into a giant capable of even greater power. Number 17, Dio. Wait, are we not gonna go over his unbound form? His unbound form is like so much stronger and they didn't even touch on it. Okay, sure. Oxys. Awesome movie. It would seem Earth isn't the only place in the universe where monsters inhabit, as is the case with the alien Pokemon, Deoxys. A psychic type Pokemon, this strange alien creature was one of the first to be able to transform into various other forms, drastically increasing various stats, speed, defense, or attack, but lowering others as a trade off. Along with its malleable body, Deoxys has shown to be able to regenerate quickly from most damage, even regrowing limbs during battle, making it nearly unstoppable. You know, Deox is actually one of those Pokemon that I want to touch on more, uh, potentially in another video, where we talk about uh, Pokemon that don't exist on Earth, but are still considered Pokemon. Number 16, Mega Latios and Mega Latias. The Sorry, I, well, I need to touch on that. This scene right here of the Mega Latias and Latios flying is just really beautiful. Like, I don't remember what movie this is from, but it's really pretty. The Eon Duo of Hoenn are formidable Pokemon in their original forms, but their mega forms make them just that much more badass. Surely, 
Yeah, okay, yeah, it's from the Hoopa movie. That's what I'm guessing. These two dragon psychic types also possess incredible intelligence, which allows them to understand human speech and communicate telepathically. Number 50. Well, hold on, let's not forget also, uh, in addition to them being able to understand human speech, they can also turn into humans, or at least appear as them. As we saw in that same movie they were showing. Not not the Hoopa movie, but the, um... Oh man, what movie is that? Is it the Drachi movie? It's okay. Latias, do you want to play with your new friends? Latias? Uh, hey! Uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Hey, no offense, but I thought Latias was the name of a Pokemon. Dean Zekrom and Reshiram. They're just really cool. Darkness and light, truth and ideals, yin and yang, both can, can be attributed to the dragons Reshiram and Zekrom. Legends say they were once one large dragon Pokemon, splitting itself into two during a quarrel, both embodying the opposite values of the other. Very true, and I really hope um, in the next few years we'll get the remake for Black and White coming out, and we'll maybe get to see what that dragon looks like that would be fantastic we have a lot of fan drawings and theories about it but i really want to know what they come up with their power is equal in measure and both share similar abilities allowing all their moves to be unaffected by their opponent's abilities and making them extremely versatile regardless of type differences just keep them away from QM and DNA splices, unless you want even more untold destructive power. You do, side note, because they're those forms are so cool. They're ah oh, man. We should we should just take a look at them. Let's check, just let let's just take a quick look at those forms and just admire how cool they are. Number 14, Lugia and Ho-Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just realized, why are we combining them? Like, why is it Latias and Latias and Reshiram and Zekrom? Like, yeah, they're two sides of the same coin, but this is more like the 40 most powerful Pokemon. Lugia and Ho-Oh aren't just masters of the seas and skies. They also are the masters of their own legendary trios. Lugia, the master over the legendary birds, and Ho-Oh presiding over the legendary beasts. While they may not have godlike space or time powers, that doesn't make these two birds any less legendary. Keeping in line with their symbolic nature, they also are opposites in stats, with Lugia possessing outstanding defense and speed, while Ho-Oh has devastating attack stats. The That's not true. Uh, Ho-Oh also has incredible defense stats as well. They're really like both pretty similar in that sense. Number 13, Zacian and Zamazenta. Yeah. These two heroes yeah. of legend. I really feel like Zacian should get his own spot on this list because he's uh, he's pretty busted. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he ran the meta for a while, especially uh, on Pokemon Showdown. So, and are known as the protectors of the Gala region due to their involvement in the legend known as the Darkest Day. Number twelve, Kurem. Good. I'm glad he got his own spot because he definitely deserves it. He kind of gets left out of pretty much everything and is only really remembered in those one games, and that's it. Is that all you got, Sword Justice? Few Pokemon strike terror into their opponent's hearts quite like Kurem. According to legend, Kurem is actually an extraterrestrial Pokemon, which would perhaps explain its dislike for humans and other Pokemon alike. What? What lore says he's an extraterrestrial Pokemon? He's the leftover pieces of Zekrom and Reshiram. Okay, I looked all over for it and I couldn't find anything about being an extraterrestrial Pokemon. I have no idea where that came from, so. Alike, 
The use of DNA splices alongside Reshiram or Zekrom allows it to become the more destructive white or black Kurem respectively. Kurem is also the only Pokemon who can learn Glaciate, an ice-type attack that it creates from freezing the energy it generates within its body. That really felt like they needed like an extra line in there because almost every Pokemon they've listed on this has at least one signature move. Number 11, Xerneas and Eviltal. Both Pokemon embody the avatars of life and death respectively, with Xerneas able to grant immortality, while Eviltal can absorb the life force of anything around it. To make things even more frightening, both possess abilities which increase their type's damage as well as any other Pokemon on the field to share that type. Death isn't explored often in the Pokemon universe, but these two bring it in heavy. Boy, do they ever. That whole generation brings it in real heavy. With the ultimate weapon, like, just taking the lives of Pokemon, it's, it's like, heavy. Number 10, Solgaleo and Lunala. Solgaleo. Lunala. These two legendaries won't be going back into the bag anytime soon. One of the grandest evolutions, and the only legendaries with an evolution chain. Also wrong. I guess it depends on how you technically count it though, because uh, you also have Ultra Beasts that can evolve too. Oh, and then we're also going to be having that in Scarlet and Violet too, so. The little ball of galactic smoke, Cosmog, transforms into one of two mighty forms, depending on your universe. With their ability to open wormholes to alternate universes, including Ultra Space, Little else is known about these two, but one thing's for certain, they can surely last in a fight. Number 9, Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon. It's kind of weird they didn't just list them as their, like, Kyogre and Groudon and just happen to mention the Primal forms as well. It's like if you just mention uh, just Mega Rayquaza. Pulling these two apart is just about impossible. As two-thirds of the weather trio, Kyogre and Groudon both possess immense power when it comes to their respective realms of the sea and land. Once they're in their primal forms, however, these two leviathans become godlike in terms of power and ferocity, while primal Groudon Dude, I just love that scene of him just like, Rolling this giant whale on his little pond. <laughs> little landmass there. Number 8, Mega Mewtwo. Yeah, see this is exactly what I'm saying. Why don't you just say the normal form and then also list the additional reasons why he's powerful or more powerful? That doesn't really make any sense. As if Mewtwo hadn't already cemented its legend, not one but two versions of Mega Mewtwo were created for the sixth generation. Mega Mewtwo X is a larger, more. Oh, yeah, and let's not forget, he also got a shadow form in uh, Pockin. I also still have no idea what's going on with that crystal in Shadow Mewtwo's shoulder. I've never really looked into it, but it looks super cool. More intimidating presence, while Mega Mewtwo Y is smaller and possesses astonishing speed. Naturally, both Mega versions boast even greater psychic powers than their original form, which is exemplified in their signature attack, Psy Strike. These attributes make Mega Mewtwo nigh invincible in a battle of brain power, and since brains tend to triumph over brawn, Mega Mewtwo is an opponent any trainer should fear in battle. That's funny they say it like that, where brains um, conquer bronze, because Mewtwo X gets like more physical attributes to him, and then Y gets more brains and more psychic power. So it's literally saying which one is better. Number 7, Mega Rayquaza. Again with this, I don't get why you're separating them like that. It's not like Rayquaza has one spot on the list and Mega Rayquaza has another spot on the list. The final third of the weather trio, Rayquaza is the master of the skies and serves as the balancing force that keeps its counterparts Groudon and Kyogre in check. Once in its mighty mega form, the particles that stream from Rayquaza's jaw allow it to manipulate the air around it, and by extension, the very weather itself. I did not know that detail about him, so thank you for telling me that, that I hope is correct. 
a handy skill in any situation. In addition to its trademark move, Dragon Ascent, Mega Rayquaza can also perform feats of speed, which liken it more to a meteor than a living creature. Number 6. Zygarde Oh, not like Zygarde complete form? No, just regular Zygarde? Okay, gotcha. Just checking. Zygarde is distinguished Wait, by having three scene. unique forms instead of evolutions. Despite all maintaining its dragon ground type, Zygarde's three forms share few common features aside from their black and green color scheme. All three possess their own unique abilities and battle tactics, with the form best equipped to deal with the specific challenge undertaking it. But of course, none of these compare to its 100% form, the result of all its spread cells coming together and forming a total beast. True. Number 5, Palkia and Dialga. I didn't remember Volcanion. Oh yeah, Volcanion did get his own movie, that's right. I was thinking of Volcarona. <laughs> Warping through space is one thing, but power over all space and time is even better. Part of the legendary creation trio, these two dragon Pokemon command space and time respectively. Although they hold immense power, the two reside in- Okay, I completely agree with this. Do you guys think they'll talk about the like primal versions of them from Legends Arceus where they like try to look their best like Arceus? in separate dimensions, maintaining the balance of space and time in the universe, though still at odds with one another. Easily angered, it's a wonder why anyone would think doing battle and capturing them would be a good idea. Number and yet we have 10 year olds catch them all the time. Number 4, Giratina. The third dragon in the creation trio, Giratina is the ruler of an alternate world known as the Distortion World, representing a darker, reverse version of our own world. Supposedly banished there for its violent nature, Giratina has accepted its new role but still harbors a grudge to those who banished it. Living in its dark world seems to have taught it a few sneaky tricks, such as its signature move, Shadow Force, in which Giratina is able to sneak past Pokemon's defenses by completely vanishing, then suddenly striking for massive damage. Number 3, Eternamax Eternatus. As we mentioned- Just again with this weird specification thing, like you didn't specify with Giratina there about his different forms. Just so weird you keep doing that. Mentioned in our previous entry, Eternatus is a powerful Pokemon that terrorized the Galar region 3,000 years ago. Eternatus has gotten a whole lot bigger than it was before! Within this insanely powerful form, Eternatus is surrounded by a storm of Dynamax energy, which rips holes into space-time and grants it an infinite amount of energy, which in Hmm. I didn't know Dynamax clouds were ripping holes in space-time. It's kind of weird you don't get any more interference with that whenever you have other legendaries that also deal with that. Din stops any opposing Pokemon from attacking. Number you know, um, seeing Eternatus do that hand laser thing, it reminds me a lot of Master Hand uh, in back in Super Smash Brothers Melee, doing his like laser hand thing. Like the two Ultra Necrozma. In Specification. And Dawn Wings forms, Necrozma is an insanely powerful Pokemon. But that's nothing compared to its true form, Ultra Necrozma. In order to obtain this form, Necrozma must undergo a process known as an Ultra Burst after it gains enough light energy. Surrounded in a golden light, Ultra Necrozma's body temperature surpasses 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning anything it touches will melt from extreme heat. Man, I, I have to remember like the first time fighting this thing and I could not beat it. I kept losing to it over and over and had just grabbed like some random Skarmory I had to come and beat it just because it can't fight a Steel-type very well. 
Not only that, but it can shoot beams from all over its body, which can reach over 18 miles away and destroy everything within its path. And it can also make flowers grow. Number 1. Arceus The time has come! Prepare for justice! Commonly known as the original one, legend has it that Arceus is responsible for creating the entire Pokemon universe. The trio master of the Lake Guardians, as well as the creation trio, Arceus wields truly awesome power, which has allowed it to serve as Earth's protector for several millennia. Although gentle to those who treat it with kindness, Arceus is also capable of incredible destruction if it feels deceived or betrayed. The only known Pokemon who was able to learn the devastating move Judgment, Arceus's vast power also allows it to stop the flow of time. I just want to touch on a quick thing though, um, just with the fact of what uh, Legends Arceus added to the lore for him. Just the cool thing of like, you are never catching the actual Arceus, you're catching a piece of him, which I find is very cool and makes a lot more sense than catching the all-powerful god being of that universe. Well guys, that was the top 20 most powerful Pokemon ever. If you agree with, uh, if you agree with this, uh, if you did enjoy this, don't forget, you can hit the subscribe button and please let me know in the comment section about more videos I could react to because I'm always looking for more opportunities. If you guys did like this video, be sure to check out when I reacted to Pokemon moves literally. See you guys next time. Bye.